Hello, and welcome to FilterStorm 2. Let's take a quick tour of the interface, and then go over masking a bit. First, let's tap this icon up here in order to open a photo. Here's a photo I took of uh, Himeji Japan from the top of the castle. Like any good iPad app, with FilterStorm 2 you can swipe to scroll, or pinch to zoom. If you're used to the FilterStorm 1 interface, things look quite a bit different, but all the old tools are there, and a few new ones. I've divided the tools into three categories, Canvas, Filters, and Metadata. Canvas includes everything that can be applied to the entire image, cropping, scaling, rotating. Filters includes everything that we can do to alter the image, both to the entire image and by using a mask to edit only a part of the image. And metadata includes a lot of new IPTC tags that you can add when either emailing or uh, posting to an FTP server. These don't yet work with the built-in Photos app uh, due to some limitations in, uh, in the tools that Apple gives us. So let's edit this photo a bit. The big thing about this photo is the sky is really blown out quite a bit. There's not uh, so much detail that you can see in looking at it, and its color is very washed out. So what we'll do is we'll tap here on luminance, and we're going to adjust the curves here. Um, I'll take yellow curves, because yellow is the opposite of blue. I'll pull that down a bit. So by pulling down the yellow, which is of course the opposite of blue, we really make the blue come out in the sky. Of course, we don't want to apply this to the entire image because then the ground will look very blue. So what we'll do is we'll hit our Apply with Mask button. And now you get the old tools that we had in Filterstorm 1 for masking. So first one here is Brush, then Color Range Mode, and uh, the Gradient Tool, and the Eraser. And on the bottom is uh, just for scrolling and zooming. Let's go to the brush. You can take a big brush and you could just apply that adjustment to the sky. And if you go a little overboard, you can go down here to the eraser and just erase what you did. That works quite well. If we want to approve this change and apply it to the image, you can hit this check checkbox. And if we don't like what we did, we can hit this X. I'm going to hit the X right now so I can show you how to do it with a different tool. Go back and pull that down again. Apply with mask. So we could also use the color range selector. Now what happens is this is looking at the color that's right under this little uh, loop here. So this loops on top of a tree here. So what it's doing is it's selecting everything that's green like the tree. Uh, and it's showing that as white. And that white area is where the adjustment will be applied to. So since we want to apply it to the sky, we'll move the loop over to the sky. But you can see now, we're also selecting a bunch of this area down here, and it's becoming blue, which we don't want. We can pull the range back so it selects less. But you know, we're never going to quite get rid of all of the grounds. But that's OK. We can tap here to add this to the mask. And then we can again use the eraser to just get rid of the extra areas that we didn't want to actually change. I'm going to again cancel this so I can show you the gradient. So let's go back, pull this down again, get nice and blue, and apply with mask again. This time we'll go to the gradient. So you have these two uh, two knobs basically that define the beginning and the end point of the gradient. You can see it previews as blue. You can just set the gradient like this and it'll apply to that area. You can also make it a radial gradient either way, but we really just want to do this linearly right now, so we'll do that. You can add that to the mask. and. It's a good change, so I will approve it. 
Now there's more we could do to this image. We can lighten up these buildings a bit, make it look, look a bit sunnier. We'll come back here to the luminance, brighten things up a bit. Give it some contrast. Okay, apply with mass. This time we're just going to go ahead and use a brush because it's the best way to just kind of drag along here and lighten that up. That looks good. We can also make the trees look a bit livelier. Give some contrast to that area. There we go. And again we'll just take a brush and we'll tap and drag around here to make that a bit contrastier. Let's add that over to the build, roof of the building as well. There we go, I like that. Great. Now, we can come tap up here to get to the export menu. This looks quite a bit different than in Filter Storm 1 because now we have this ability to export large. Now, what we're normally working on here is an image that's been scaled down to 1800 pixels on the long side. But what we do when we select export large is we'll bring in the full-sized image and filter storms this whole time been recording what you've been doing to the image so it'll go and it will reapply all of your edits to the full-sized image so you can save to photos now so it gives you this progress indicator and it goes ahead and it reapplies everything I did to the full image now this is running on the simulator here so the actual speed on the iPad will probably be half that maybe a bit slower but it's still quite usable. And when it's done, it'll just bring the photo right back in. And there's our quick first tour of the interface in Build Storm 2.